What's up, everybody? Uh, I built these cooler radios. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you know what it is. Uh, if you want to see more about this one, go ahead and check out my other videos. I got a ton of stuff about it. You know, full in-depth tour, if you will. Um, I want to show you my new project. This is a 150 quart igloo cooler and a uh, custom wagon kit. These are 10 inch wheels, which is the same size as uh, that cooler has. <laughs> and it's a axle back there, just like a straight axle or whatever. And then the front turns. So this thing is basically like a wagon, it's awesome. I can't wait to get the parts in to get it started. Uh, right now it's not actually even solidly on there, I just have it with duct tape, just to basically get the idea. I wanted to see uh, what the different, you know, I wanted to play around and see where the wheels would look good. So this thing's got a pretty sharp turning radius, it's awesome. And it rolls with no effort. I mean, there's, granted there's no weight in it right now, but, you know, it still takes no effort, it's going to be awesome. I'm trying to roll it back straight here. <laughs> Things like driving a small car or a go-kart or something. So uh, this is the handle right there. Uh, I might paint it white to match more. I'm not sure yet. I wish I could paint the cooler, but I don't feel like going through all the work to get that uh, protective coating off. So uh, right off the bat, let me move the handle out of the way. God, this thing got a good grip. Got the quick hatch. Um, this side of the cooler is going to be the actual cooler. Uh, with this one right here, this is called a dry build. As you can see, there's it's not a cooler anymore. It's strictly just, you know, electronics, the radio, lights, power inverter, all that good stuff. Uh, I don't use a cooler too much, so this is like my personal one. I actually never use a cooler. I think I have like once in my life. So uh, worst case scenario, I could easily just throw one on top and, you know, bungee cord it to this or whatever. But, uh... This one's obviously going to be a big party machine, so as big as it is with all the extra space, I'll go ahead and do the latches. Got to be gentle with it because I can hear that duct tape coming off. You can see that thing is huge. It fits like, I think like 250 cans and all that good stuff. Uh, drain is over here, so I'm going to have to relocate that. Probably just put it like... Actually, I might just put one straight down. I'm not sure. That way, you know, it's not sticking out or doesn't look out of place or anything. Uh, I'm guessing probably about either this portion right here or this one is going to be where I'm going to have the divider. And then all the electronics, you know, just basically the battery and the amp and the wiring is going to be over here. And then I'm going to have two 6x9s on this side, two on the other side. Might eventually do two more, I'm not sure, or four more. Depends on how loud it is. Uh, I am going to do the stainless steel latches because these ones are just junk. Uh, the plastic, so after they get some sun, they just wear out. Uh, I'm going to do a, like a chain link stopper thing to hold the lid from going too far. Um, in the cooler side, up here on the lid, like right here, and uh, like maybe right here, I got two 12 inch white LED strips and I got a magnet switch. So basically what's gonna happen is when you open this up, it's gonna be real bright. Cause I mean, I'm in my broad daylight house right now. It's the middle of the day and you can see it's kind of dark in there. I mean, you can definitely see in there, but it'll be a lot nicer to have some bright white light in there so you know what you're grabbing, especially if it's at night. And then we can close that, the lights will turn off. Um, probably do the same switch in here as well I'll do like one in the corner or something like that and then I'll have you know like one probably giant strip to light up the whole cooler so if I ever got to get into it at night I'm gonna see in the whole thing uh, I started ordering parts yesterday um, all I've ordered is like the small electronics like the wires uh, digital voltmeter some of the LED strips I got the the colored LEDs like that the remote control ones I got those I got a long couple strips to go under it so the whole, you know, it'll be like underglow or whatever. And uh, probably gonna do like 
some red ones on the back, you know, almost like taillights. And then uh, I want to do a couple, like, small spotlights on the front. So, like, if you're walking with it at night, it'll be lighting up in front of you. That'll be pretty sweet. But uh, I got to figure that out. Only I found some cool ones that are, like, flush mount, so you wouldn't even really know they're there. But they're coming from China, and it says they wouldn't be here for, like, two months. And I hate waiting for that. But, uh... I'm going to probably go with the Polk Audio DB691, I think they are, the 6x9s, three ways. They are, oh, excuse me, I had to burp there. <laughs> they are like 150 watts RMS, I think, a piece, so they're going to pound. I would do a sub, but this thing's going to be outside, and unless you're in some kind of enclosed space, you just, the base is not going to travel, so it's just going to be a power killer. But, um... Power-wise, I'm probably going to go with at least one deep cycle marine battery. Um, and this one, I have a 35 amp hour sealed SLA or whatever it is. That battery was like 90 bucks. Uh, I didn't order it online, which I should have, but I was... When I get an idea in my head, I want the stuff now. And unfortunately, I paid out the ass for that at a battery shop. I could have got it online for probably 50 bucks, but, you know, I would have had to wait wait you know a month or a couple weeks whatever but uh walmart has the 110 hour amp 110 amp hour uh deep cycle marine batteries for like 80 bucks so same price i paid for that one but it's literally like a little over like three times the battery power so i might go with one i mean i'm definitely going with one of those i might go with two we'll see how that plays out but uh those will be right there and then i'll probably I want to keep it even, you know, I don't want it to be real heavy on one side, so I'll probably do the amp on the back here. And then, uh, I like to do, like, just, like, a nice, just shelf so you can't even see in there, and then have, like, the head unit. I'm not sure if I want to do the head unit on the inside or the outside. If I do it on the inside, I definitely want some kind of, like, external sensor for the remote or, like, a, even, like, one of those marine controllers, you know, where you got, like, fade or, uh, you know, the seek buttons and volume and all that. But I have a lot of plans for this thing, so I'm going to do those stainless steel latches, like I said. Uh, I'm going to do the stainless steel hinges back here. Hopefully be able to get like some decals or something on here just to make it pop a little bit. It would probably be cool to like see if I could paint those maybe, those uh, grills, the vent. But uh, yeah, this thing is going to be awesome and uh, I will definitely be posting a lot of videos and you all make like one long video from start to finish and kind of chop it up so you can see a in-depth view of how all this works. I spent, if you're uh, curious, the wagon kit, which is just the wheels, you know, everything you see down there. It's basically you build your own wagon, but obviously I throw a cooler on there. It was uh, like 85 bucks. It was like 90 something after shipping. I had a 10% off code too I found online from uh, Northern Tool. And then the cooler I got on Amazon for like 85 bucks shipped, which is one hell of a deal because that cooler right there from Myers was like 55 or 60 bucks. And that's a like a 50 quart maybe, maybe a 60. And this is a 150 for 80 bucks. So online shopping is definitely the way to do this because uh, with this one I'm trying to be budget friendly. Right now with my rough, rough estimate, comparing what I paid for parts for that and then, you know, parts I want for this. Right now, it's looking like it's going to run me about 900 plus dollars. So, uh, I'm definitely trying to not spend that much, but as of right now, that's what it looks like. I, uh, one thing I do want to do, which I'm not 100% because I don't have a welder, so it would have to be paying somebody to do it. I want to put an uh, electric motor in here and put a sprocket on there. And then have a little throttle that comes up on this handle, just like a button, maybe even like a twist throttle. That way, like if I'm going through grass or something, I can just twist it and just, you know, just have it follow me. That would be awesome. That is like my biggest goal for this thing. Because, you know, I've already built a cool cooler. Plays me. This one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I want it to be even cooler. You know, obviously, bigger and better. So, uh, yeah, definitely subscribe, you know, like, share the video if you want. Um, today is July 2nd, 
My parts probably won't start getting here till next week, so probably like the 7th or 8th. And uh, I probably won't actually start building for a couple more weeks because uh, I've got a lot of stuff i got to buy for my house and the yard. Fourth of July, so we're spending a bunch of money. Don't really have extra money to be blowing on this right now, so unfortunately it'll be a couple weeks before I even get it started. But uh, thanks for watching.